Episode 85. Mm. Um, this might be the closest two podcasts that we've ever done in a row. I think it is. <laughs> Dedicated. <laughs> back to back. So what happens when you're quarantined. Uh, episode 85. Thank you, RP Strength, Inside Tracker. We have Jim, Tasia, We have Jim, Ta- Oh, yeah, you're supposed to introduce oh, yourself. I'm, I'm here. They're all here. I'm, yeah, I'm here. I'm here as well. Yeah, but you got to say your name when you say you're yeah, here. Yeah, the people want to know. Oh, do uh, you want to go? Um, <laughs> Jim's here with his quarantine brain. Wow. Tasia is here also. Kristen's here. Rich is here. Uh, that's so awkward. Yeah, it's so weird. talking like about it. yourself it in the is, third yeah. person. Yep. Um, it's, it's too produced. Quarantine. Every day, I feel like more and more stuff gets shut down. Um, we've been doing these kind of quarantine or stay home workouts, even though we don't have to, but we are, and they're really bad. Everyone we've done has been, they're really hard. They feel like open workouts really is what they feel like. There's no reason to stop on any of them. So you kind of have to go. Yeah. And so you're getting videoed and everybody's watching it. So you can't stop either. So you have to go fast and it just hurts. Like we did that one Friday with the ruck sack, uh, squats and double unders. That was terrible to this morning. We did some. Uh, did one for the members, and it was uh, plate ground overhead, which just I had a 55. For some reason, the girls used 25s. I felt <laughs> like that was a proper RX scale. And then you had to plate uh, burpee, jump up to your plate on the burpee, and that was I terrible. Mean, in the spirit of quarantine workouts, it said pick your weight. <laughs> That's true. In the spirit, I would lie if I was, was not no. getting super frustrated in the middle of it. Because you guys would, and you had the high temp plates. Yeah, so you could drop so it. So you would just drop it and it would stay and you could just grab it and go right yeah. into your first one. I'd have to, because I use a comp plate, because I use a 55, because I was like, you know, we should use what, you know, sure, was necessary, sure. not way less. I felt like 25 was necessary. And so I had it was to still a great workout. flip it up a little bit to grab underneath it and go, hey, yeah, Trice and Violet are in here. So if you guys hear door slamming and kids fighting, then <laughs> she wants out. Going on. He didn't want to let her. Yeah. I was it. going for more like heart rate, you know, lightweight. Yeah. <laughs> Just keep moving. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Not strength, you know. Yeah. So. Did, did you guys use Zoom? We did use Zoom. Yes. Yeah, it worked really well. So this was the one this morning was for like all the members who can't come. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Lindy was there. Really? A uh, 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 Lindy from the oh. class. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't ever saw her on the screen. So like oh. I was like, oh. Because people like. Um, and it's not a common in. name. Yeah, exactly. People could call in. And yeah. like they could choose to have their video up if they wanted. You know how it works. Right. Yeah. But no one really had their video up. But yeah. there were there are a few people. Did you have people like with their mics open so you could hear them? Some people were asking Josh yeah. questions. Yeah. Oh, they were okay. What they're doing. Josh that's did cool. an awesome job. Yeah. Because it's hard. Cool. There's a lot of time. Yeah, that's a ton. Like yeah, in between stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That technology is amazing though. It really I use is. Zoom for mindset stuff. Yeah, we had and four people really in on the class. I was yeah. like, okay, what are we doing here? <laughs> So, but the cool thing is a lot, it's recorded and yeah. uploaded and they can check it out later. So yeah. it's good. It was, yeah. uh, it was, it was fun. It was hard. It was really hard. Yeah. Sometimes some of that body weight stuff or stuff with plates like that, the simple stuff hurts me the worst. That's honestly what I dislike the most. Give me a heavy barbell or heavy something. Yeah. I'd Give me some skill. That. Give me some skill to slow me down a little bit. Yeah. My heart rate's been super elevated. I feel like on all of those workouts, it's good though. It's probably what we need. Because we probably do a little bit too much uh, high skill stuff and a little bit less disco stuff. Yesterday, this was it. Yesterday, the sandbags and the handstand push-ups you guys did. Oh, that was and awful. I substituted oh, yeah. with uh, just strict press. Yeah, I could not keep my heart rate down. Yeah. I didn't think that was going to happen to me. And the I sandbag breathe. just jacks my heart rate up so high. Same. So it was good. I feel like you can smash those sandbags. Oh, you're I just like over there sandbags. slinging that bag around. Just. <laughs> Technically, the 100 pound is not exactly fair to the equivalent to the men's 150. It should mm-hmm. be a little bit heavier. But when we do 150, you guys do 200. Which we do all the time compared to what we do with the 150. <laughs> then that's not as fair. Well, we were talking about technique. Mm-hmm. And going the 100, the 100 pound sandbag is definitely not heavy oh. enough for oh, me. Oh, no. With, with 100 on me, I can just – literally, right. it's, it's nothing. But the 150 – you have to pay attention and do it right Yeah. if you're going to get reps out of it. So I started watching you close. Mm-hmm. Chris and I were actually talking about this. And you know how you kind of pull it and it kind of hangs in the air here and, and then you push. tip it over. Yeah. And that changed everything for me. Yeah, I, ha- I take a little bit longer maybe on my setup on the floor because I'll roll it over one hand and let it fall on the other mm-hmm. hand. And so it's more 
straight up in to here and yep. then get that little hip where some people will just grab it immediately and then you hip it and then throw it. Yeah. There's just a couple of different ways to do it. And that way, for some reason, is just the way I, I picked up. Well, it's fast. It's explosive. And then when you get it here, as yeah, long you as you keep pushing it, you don't enough. get buried by yeah, it. Then exactly. You're, then you're good to go. You're good to go. Did you guys do any fun quarantine stuff this weekend? Um... We went on walks. Oh, we nice. did a family yeah. walk. Yeah, we went on some family, family walk. walk. We nice. did this Fun. game actually while we were out, where we would wave at people and take a tally of how many people wave back. Actually, wave back. And actually, people are being really nice. Lots <laughs> it's of Tennessee. waves. Tennessee waves a lot. Though. Oh, really? You can drive down the yeah. road and you do that. And most people wave, even oh, okay. though. Like I had a buddy in in high school, a really good friend of mine. Everybody that he'd pass, you'd always see his hand go up. Right. Every Everyone? single person. <laughs> we yeah. used to make fun of him. Yeah. So. When you come up the mountain. Yeah. Oh, everybody waves. Everybody waves up, everybody waves, everybody yeah. waves up there yeah. for sure. It's God's country up there. There were, <laughs> there were so many people out walking around, like way more than normal. Really, Chris oh, and I yeah. went for just trying to get a out. Walk well, it was people. super nice on Sunday. It was nice. Yeah, we went out and walked a little bit. But what's weird is that people that you know, yeah, that you're around all the time, they don't want to. The, the whole distancing thing. People yeah. are staying right. away, and you and know, I guess that's, that's what, what they're we need pushing. To do. And I think that's you know that's. That's what the the leadership is asking us to do. It's a necessary evil. If we can slow this thing down, I think we should probably. It's weird, but you yeah, know, we see each other all the time, and yeah. right, you know, but people that you don't see all the time, it's kind of like all right, yeah. maybe we distance a little bit. Yeah. I kind of equate all of us to family, where it's you know, it's super weird to have that be a thought in your head though. When you, you you're like, yeah, hey, I think you stay over there. Have I'll you stay seen over the bar stool thing where there's like. Uh, eight or ten like older men in a, in the cul-de-sac mm-hmm. and I think they have a beer in hand right. and they're all like in a, a big like circle but they're all six feet apart and it's <laughs> it's pretty funny. Did you, I, awesome. we probably can't talk wow. about it in detail on the podcast but did you see the, the video that I sent you with the guy explaining to the lady that it's the it's the picture of the guy on oh, his yeah, driveway yeah, yeah, yeah. and he's and holding the donut. The donut. Yeah. God, that's so hard. Man, there's so many of those <laughs> that are out and you're just like, wow. Did you see the one where the guy's like... Uh, the the question is like the the narrator says you have two options your first option is to be quarantined with your wife and child or, or <laughs> option A is to be quarantined with your wife and child option B and he goes I'll take B, B. <laughs> B. definitely B right away right away he doesn't even listen to option B so our dogs are freaking out because they they're used to the schedule yeah you know Kristen goes to work sure she's working from home now yeah Woo. the dogs are just standing in the hallway like who what are we doing there's like, another one that's <laughs> like uh, the dog's like we've went on six walks already can we stop this you know like, <laughs> yeah. I saw one that the, the the dog was so happy that the homeowner was home that it wagged its tail so hard that it sprained its tail yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's good. I saw one too. There's memes everywhere. But like dogs are super happy that their families are home and cats are sitting there like, what is going on? Please leave. <laughs> so. Yep. We um, we did work, went to a local, the farm where we got our four bison and helped them work there. So gave them, they gave them their, their uh, shots. Um, they dewormed them and they pregnant checked them and then they took blood to send off. So man, that was a, that was uh, learned a lot, but yeah. it was it was work. Yeah, we uh, we started. Usually they start around twelve, twelve thirty, but they couldn't get them round up. They were how um, how muddy it was. But basically, you know, they had fifty nine of them that kind of moved into one of these fields, and then it kind of works its way down. The fence works its way in, and you push them all in, and then there's a corral here. And so what they did is they corralled about half of them, and then you cut them into like groups of probably four. Four was like the max. You know, the yeah. smaller they are, you could get a couple more into a group. But right. sometimes three, sometimes two, sometimes ones kind of depended. And uh, then there's basically every 10 to 12 feet, there's another gate. And you would swing these gates and they're on ropes. And you let four in. You let four move up, move up, move up. Right. And so they make it around this corner. And then you have um, another gate that's holding some. And then another gate that's holding some. And it all these gates are on ropes. So you open the gate and it opens and sometimes they'll move. Right. Sometimes you have to na- to uh, motivate them a little bit, but you have these flags okay. and you kind of just, they're just kind of timid and they don't like the flag. So they'll take off Well, right. they come around a corner and then uh, I forgot what they call it, a sugar gate or something like that. And so basically they come into the gate and then you just kind of pull them. The gate is on a hinge that comes all the way around. So it pushes them oh, wow. into stall, like a single stall. And so you have a stall with a, a door that pulls back and they come in, you close it behind them. So it's just long enough for like the biggest ones. 
and then another door in front of them. You pull that door, they move up. And so basically there's two two stalls where they're not doing anything. Then they move up again and then they get weighed. Then they move up again and it uh, has this whole hydraulic system that basically, depending on the size, it pushes in on them and holds them. And then uh, gets them right around their like shoulders and holds their head in. And then there's a bar to where they can't lay down and then like just keeps them from well, hurting themselves and hurting the vet because right. you're trying to help them. And so basically we were just working, you know, working those gates, working, you know, trying to give it a move around, move on. And, right. and, uh, it was fun once you got the hang of it, you know, it, it was, uh, it's, it was some work though, but we do had they have time. all the equipment there that does this or yeah, does the so where bring we, it? So where we brought, where we bought ours, um, it's lazy G ranch and he, he's got the whole setup. Wow. It's like a probably 40, $50,000 like yeah. working system. And it was it was fun. Like once you kind of got the hang of it, it was a lot of work. But it was it was got chilly and are they working? We were stuck with, there for about six with, or seven hours with horses or dogs or how do they get them to like uh, razors and stuff like that? Oh yeah, mules like not like the animal mule, but yeah, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, a mule. And so uh, it was. It learned a lot and just how to work them. And man, there was a so they have three bulls there. They have this one. It's kind of smaller. He's younger. Then they have one called Custer, and he was, I think, 17, 1,800 pounds. And then they have George. Well, the bulls you put by themselves. You don't want them, right. you know, and you give them, like, two or three gates to let them kind of walk around. And this thing's just pacing. And uh, George George got a little frustrated. And so these gates are probably six, seven feet high. Yeah. And George decided he wanted out. And George jumps up and kind of like mashes the gate down. Oh, no kidding. And then he George, gets on top of a six foot gate. Yeah. And then George jumps out. Oh, that's insane. This George is a is out. 2,000 pound <laughs> animal. Yeah. Yeah. For wow. sure. We didn't get to weigh him because he was, but he's the biggest bull for sure. His name wow. is George. Wow. And so, uh, but so the, yeah, that's so the way it is, is it, once he's out, he's just back out in his pasture where he wants to be. Right. And so he jumps that fence and just walks out like, just calm. peace, peace, dude. Uh, he's like, but nah. man, these things like when they're in that shoot, they're, Wow. hot they're pissed that's wow. scary and you've got these flags and you're trying to just kind of shoo them along yeah and man they kick hard you just hear wham mm. and you know there's steel and stuff like that and it's your ears are ringing by the end of the day and it was a lot of fun it learned a lot um but it was it was work so are they raising raising those animals for beef is that what they do or are they well you can't get beef from a bison I, so well what's the right term <laughs> just kidding bison what? oh bison. it's just bison yeah, yeah, yeah. just kidding uh, I yeah, would have so, known that so they cow calf some of them so they'll sell off some of the calves all gone so they they'll cow calf so they'll sell some of the calves um or they'll, yeah, they'll send him off to slaughter. And he just kind of really likes the animals. He's right. raised them for like, I think, 15, 20 years, something wow. like that. So it's uh, it's cool. They had, we worked 59 of them. I think they have 110. And oh, so my goodness. Basically, wow. he has he has a herd of probably around 60 or 70 that are pure bison. Hmm. So like 100% genetics bison. I mean, there might be like a very small, small percentage that has cow DNA because what happened was we... Back in the you know 1800s, cattle farmers tried to you know cross right. cross uh, breed them and see if they could make like the perfect um, animal. Right. And so you you have a lot of leftover, um, just very small you know cattle stuff in them. So he has on one side of the road those are the pure pure pure, and then you have this what he calls the misfit island, huh. and they look like they look like bison, but genetically they're not like uh, pure. Hmm. But he has a couple that are somehow like have the smallest bit of Jersey cow in them. So that like cream colored, you know, hairy, furry cow. And so it makes these white bulls and they look awesome. They look wow. really cool. They're like blonde colored, oh, just no, huge heads. Cool. And his name's Blizzard. <laughs> that's a good name. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, Hillary's like, we need him. And I was like, Hillary, chill out. We can't. She's like, <laughs> he, he. She just likes the way he looks. Right. So. But, I mean, he's got another probably 50 or 60 of those that are wow. the misfits, the, the island of misfit toys. Huh. Well, having a bull would change the dynamics, wouldn't it? A little bit. They're kind of, they're more or less kind of off to themselves most of the time. Yeah. Um, they, in, until it's breeding season, then they get a little bit angry. Um, honestly, you know, like the that head cow that we have, the, the alpha cow, they're a little bit more you know, high strung than the bulls, I think. Um, especially when we were working them the other day, you know, they were, there was one, there was a couple of them that you could not, we just couldn't get them in the chute to right. turn around. They were like, like just ramming the door, like angry, Gosh. angry. Um, 
and so i mean i would be angry too and they're you know the herd animals are getting separated right the the joke is you can make a bison go anywhere it wants to go um but mm-hmm. i saw you saw it firsthand it was it was really cool but uh learned a lot is it just the one guy that like does all this stuff normally or does he need like a team no of you have to have like it's a bunch of so what they do is you know they have a bunch of friends out and help and you kind of they tell you what your job is and then um, at the end of the day, they you get fed bison stew. He makes some bison <laughs> stew oh, and I some desserts good. up in their barn, and it was it was really cool. It was fun. So are you learning that so that you can do that to your bison? Um, eventually, you know, he trying to like he tries to work his twice a year. Um, I was talking to Matt, Matt, my the partner in uh, Froning Farms, my best friend. He um, he said we'll see how it goes. Like if we can keep them healthy without working them too much, because they just get so high stress. Like you could see by the end of it. You know, there was a lot of them that had gored each other just because they're in that, you know, tight space. There's some that like some of the smaller ones, like their uh, horn would break off. And there's just like as bad as it sounds, there's blood everywhere. There's crap everywhere. And they're just high stressed. And you just if you can limit that, I would like to limit that. But you also you want to keep them healthy. You know, you don't want them dying. And like he said, he had one. The reason they're doing the the blood testing is they had some type of uh, parasite that one of theirs got. And it just basically just withered away. And so they want to keep that from happening. And so that's why they mm. tested the blood, which they said takes a lot longer. Usually they don't test the blood. Mm. And man, they have to test the blood. You have to lift up the tail and the vein is like, oh, oh. it like there's two places I wouldn't want to get a shot. And yeah. that's the two. That's one of the two places. Oh, like, no. Basically right in their butthole. Oh, it was no. it looked so uncomfortable. Oh, but I mean, trying to keep them healthy and and do all that. And my kids are just going to destroy this place. <laughs> Toes. Good times rolling over there. <laughs> well, that's pretty crazy. Yeah. I don't know about that. I'm uh, like when I was a kid, I got to do some like branding of cattle, uh-huh. like on some friends who had a farm in Nebraska. And that was kind of cool for like two days, you know? Yeah. They were like, um, you know, we do this twice a year and we're going to do half now and half later. I was like, yeah, let us know when you're doing the second half and we'll be back next year. Yeah. You know, or back this <laughs> fall. We'll help out. But man, it was. It was work. It was work. And. It was, like I said, it was fun, but they got started a little bit late and it got a little cold and yeah. you want to do it. They were saying when it's cooler, because when it gets too hot, man, they were already like panting and high stress. And like, it was like, towards the end. You could tell it was starting to wear on some of them. Cause I mean, wow. they've been penned up and um, where it was so wet, they couldn't get them into the corral. And so it was, it was work. I feel like that'd be like the scariest part trying to get them like in there a person tries to do that well there was like probably eight or ten of them some of them were in like razors some guys have flags i mean they're pretty you know they're dangerous by you know they're super dangerous yeah. you're stupid but um <laughs> it was you know they knew what they were doing yeah for sure that's awesome that's and that's their full-time deal or at least um, one of their full-time yeah deals. one of their full-time deals yeah. they, i think he does some other stuff and his wife owns one of the boat docks around here too so oh. it was a lot of fun like i said it was felt like a feel like a real cowboy at that point yeah um once you get the hang of it too you're like all right i got this yeah. so it was fun you're trying to jump up and you know i can't sit still so i was trying to do like two and three different jobs and yeah. move around and all that that stuff because that's cool if you're just standing there it gets really boring like i could have you could have just stayed in one spot like open a gate close the gate but while because what would happen is the front spot would take so long that you know, trying to get these couple into the shoots. So I was trying to work to get the shoots and then you work back up. And then by the time you'd get three or four in the shoots, then it'd be time to open another gate. And so yeah, it made it fun versus just sitting there. That's a whole different kind of work too. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't like, you know, it wasn't super, you were just standing for six hours. You're jumping up and off these because they have ledges built because these, I mean, the working system and the gates are like, you know, seven, eight feet tall. And man, sometimes these things were jumping up. And that you could see insane. the top of their head yeah, and like annoying. jumping out and like almost getting out. It I was, don't think I could even stand there. I'd crazy. be so scared. And then, you know, there's like these two by sixes or two by eights that are the back of the gates. Like once they get in a shoot and they're just, you know, you're trying to swipe them with the flag to get them to move forward. And they're just wham with Whoa. their freaking hoof. And it, it's the fastest thing you like. It's just like boom. Oh, yeah. And then it's sometimes they'd hit the metal and it was so loud. You're just like, I was when I first got there, I was like, this guy's got earplugs. Why has he got earplugs on? And then I was like, oh. I don't know why. Because by the end of the day, your ears are just ringing. You're kind of cold because it's like 50 degrees and the wind's yeah. starting to blow. And it's like getting later at night. And you're just like, okay, I've, I'm ready to go home. It Gosh. just puts into perspective like it's trying hard, to. Hard living. 
trying to kill one of those like four meat with oh a, yeah with a bow and arrow or yeah, something right? you know like chase it down like run it off a cliff wow yeah, yeah. they're they're pretty cool animals that's that's what i keep finding out and keep learning and then you know you're trying to notice all right so your ours are supposed to be bred they're supposed so they're supposed to be pregnant and they're pregnant checking them so you're trying to see all right do mine look like this you know because how do you pregnant check a bison yep yep you just re- you ever seen how they pregnant check a cow? You just reach in there and I'll reach in there, check it out, feel feel around in there. That's kind of what I thought. Yeah. So, so you're going to be doing that with yours then soon? No. <laughs> I'm just going to wait you know to how see. I'm gonna check? <laughs> oh, there's a there's a baby out there. Yeah. Yeah. So, yep. um, they're supposed to, ours are supposed to be pregnant, but yeah. So basically, what they do is they've got a list and they're numbered and they're tagged and if you know they keep up with their blood work so they know all that stuff, but then if they haven't calved in a year or two. They get harvested. Oh yeah. And so that's you know that's their the job. Old glue factory. Okay, so if they do calve, then they get if to they're go calved, again. they get to keep going unless they're a real pain in the butt. Because some of them, like you can tell, some of them with their mm-hmm. demeanor are right. more hmm. yeah. just more work and harder mm-hmm. headed than the others. And yep. so if you got, if especially if you have one that's like hasn't calved in a year or two, and it's a real pain in the butt, yeah. she gone. Yeah. Because there was one that was, she was very ornery, and you're kind of like. They were like, oh, she's got a calf. Got to keep her. <laughs> yeah. So it is what it is. I got a friend in Texas and he, it's kind of similar to you yeah. only with cows. Yeah. It's kind of, he has 15 or 20. Yeah. And they, they sell some of the meat mm-hmm. and they keep some for themselves. And then, um, and he said the same thing. The ones that have poor attitudes and that are harder Always to deal calf. with. Um, if they're not producing oh, yeah. a calf. They, and they Cause it's almost cheaper to buy a cow that's bred than to keep a cow mm-hmm. that's not bred. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's almost cheaper to just go ahead and buy a new one and. Got to eat them. That's what they're there for. Yeah. That's hard for me. I've been out to his place a few times and they're almost like, some of them are like pets almost. Mm. And he's good with it. He Not, gets oh, it. him. Okay. I thought you meant our place. I was no, like, no, number 34. If she doesn't calf, she <laughs> gone. <laughs> Is his, that the BB? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's mean. Hillary hates her. <laughs> Hillary. Cause so there's out there. They, every day they go out and they feed them bread every day. So these things come up to the fence. Like you could kind of pet. The ones on the, the misfits, especially. Yeah. You could like, they, this bull walks up to the fence and I'm just kind of like rubbing its nose and it's wanting food, but it's standing there. Like, you know how you try to rub any, or like, you know, pet any of ours and they freak out. Yeah. But I was telling Hillary, I was like, all of theirs grew up there and they know them and they get fed every day. They get fed bread. They get fed, you know, just to try, don't touch. <laughs> and so they are just very chill and, you know, kind of, yeah. I mean, they're still wild animals stay behind the fence, but they're. You can kind of, and so Hillary yesterday, because she went out there for, with us for a little bit just to look. And so yesterday she's, she's determined to make ours nice. So she's, I'm getting, <laughs> she got up and she's like, I'm going to go feed the bison. I'm like, what? She's like, uh, they're going to like me. And I was like, right. <laughs> so that happened yesterday. We'll see what happens. Okay. Today. All right. All right. That's so, good stuff. But yeah. We had horses when I was growing up. We had, we had four or five horses and man, I. My, everybody in my family was really into that. I was not. No. And I, getting up and feeding them and busting horses, ice. And, horses are work. Yeah. They're like, I don't know. Did I ever tell you the story when we had horses? No. My dad, my sister wanted horses. And of course, whatever my sister wanted, my sister got. And so my dad buys, my and my dad, I love him, but he's a cheap ass. <laughs> and so the neighbor down the road, this is old drunk. And there's multiple times we've, this guy would fall off this horse. And as you're driving by, he'd just fall off this horse. So this horse is for sale. So dad buys this horse. And he's like, hey, this thing's not completely broke. I don't want to put your sister on it. I'm 15 maybe at the time. She's 11. Right. 10 and a half, 11. He's like, so I want you to break this horse for your sister. I'd never ridden a horse in my life. <laughs> I must have got thrown off this horse 15 times. That's so scary. Yeah. So I'm not a huge fan of horses. Yeah. And then... Two weeks ago, these horses just show up to my dad's house. Just oh, yeah. show up. I forgot about that already. Two white horses and a black horse, black, dark brown horse. Up into his yard? Up into his yard. He texts, nobody knows, all that crap. All that he does. <laughs> <laughs> and so we go up there. Hillary, oh, Hillary wants a horse so bad. I'm like, we don't need horses. She's like, I want horses. I'm like, we don't need horses. Anyway, the neighbor, this guy lives in Mount Juliet. He stores his horses on Pfeiffer Mountain. They got out. Hmm. Made their way to dad's. This guy is basically wants to get rid of him. He doesn't have time for him. Right. $500 for all three horses. Oh. And Hillary's like, we, we need them. Oh, wow. And I'm like, there's a reason these horses are so cheap. 
Yeah. No, we need them. I'm like, we have three little kids. Like, yeah. we don't need these horses. Horses and are work. Work. And so we have these awesome neighbors across the street that Hillary, they just love animals. And so they have like pot belly pigs. They have oh. um, cows. They have a bunch of other stuff. So Hillary, after I told her, like she was, she was thinking she's getting these horses. And I'm like, Hillary, <laughs> be real here. Like we do not need these horses. And I shamed her out of it basically. I'm a horrible <laughs> husband. But anyway. Whatever it takes. She texts the neighbors and is like, hey, text the, um, text the wife and was like, hey, there's these horses up here and you need them. And the lady's like, well, I'll come up there and we'll see him, her and her husband. And uh, Violet, no. <laughs> and so they come up there, and sure enough, he's like, the guy's like looking at him. He knows horses. And he's like, well, you want them? And she's like, the wife's like, yeah, I do. He's like, load them up. And so now we have horses across the street. Oh, that's, so that's really I was like, to look out for him I was like, I'll give you guys a bag of feed a month just, right. to, to get, just so I don't have to have these stupid horses. Because she was like, we could put them in with the bison. Well, everything you read is like, do not mix buffalo or bison with horses. Do right. not. They'll right. kill. Like, the bison will kill them. And so. Didn't they don't. have like a mule or something over there across the street? They have it in different corrals. Oh, they had a donkey. A donkey. And he Lakeland, would come right up. Donkey and, that Lakeland oh, yeah. called Honky. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was really friendly though yeah. when you come around. Oh, yeah, super be, nice. Yeah. These are these are nice horses, but there's two white ones and a black one. But yeah, the Honky. That's what Lakeland, when she was little, honky. she used to go, hey, Honky. And I'm like, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so. That's awesome. <laughs> Trice, you silly guy. He's got the box of Cheetos. Is that what that is? Cheez-Its. Cheez-Its. Cheez-It party mix. Give him some. Give her some. He's like, nah, dad. Gosh, nah. <laughs> Make me. So, yeah. That was our, our weekend. Well, last two weekends, actually. So. Yeah, that that can compound. The more animals you get, the more work. The oh, yeah. It's miserable. I can't. Mm. Three children, three, three horses. Chi- and our kids are small. Like, if they get older and they can show that they can take care of some of that stuff, yeah. Yeah. And these... I don't feel like trying to get these things corralled, these horses, was a nightmare. So yeah. try to ride them is going to be a nightmare. And I, yeah, no. Nah. Yeah, we good. I we was good. never into that. Like in the wintertime in Colorado, you'd have to go out. Uh, and for whatever yeah, reason, we didn't have like a heater on the water tank. So you right. had to bust the ice up and feed them. And that I just terrible. really got to where I was like, I'm not into this. Yeah. I don't want to do this. Because it wasn't that fun riding them for me. No. I know all the... Yeah, like the Farm. work is like way more than the joy that you get. Gosh. There's a crash. Huh? Yeah, the work was way more than the fun for yeah. me, and I know all the yeah. farmers and ranchers out there. Yeah, I don't I'm love sorry. riding horses. Just I'm like kind of scared of them. I think because they're so big and yeah. whatever. So I've only been on a horse once, and it was good. Like I'm glad I did it, but my parents, I don't know if I could do my it parents again. had horses in Nebraska. Uh-huh. So when the girls would go there when they were little, they would ride the horses. I and I remember pulling into the farmyard, coming to get the girls, and they'd been there for a week. Yeah. And my nephew is riding a horse, big old horse, with bareback, and Taylor's behind him, holding on to him. And he comes flying out of the farmyard, like riding fast with that horse. And I'm watching Taylor bounce, 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 and then she just flies up. Oh, my no. goodness. And off the horse. And I was just like, yeah, we're not doing yeah, that. I yeah. don't know. But... Yeah. Everybody's laughing, and it's funny when they're little. And, and they're okay, right? right. Yeah. But, you know, things can happen. I decided when I when I got out of college, I was going to be a, a cowboy. Oh. Going to be a professional football player. My knee's all messed up. So I'd be a cowboy. So I'm like, you know what? That's what I'll do. I'll rodeo. Sure. There you go. How'd it and, go? Well, I signed, up, <laughs> I signed up for a bronc riding school in Greeley, Colorado. And I think it was maybe, I can't remember, $500 for three days. Mm-hmm. And the guy who taught the course had been a professional, you know, sure. rodeo champion or whatever. I went out there for the first day when they're just kind of talking about it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, hell no. Yeah. You're like, okay. <laughs> no, because you just no. get hurt. Yeah. You know, you get on the back of one of those like things. That. and Yeah. I mean, those people are Trampled crazy. Or whatever. Know, they are, yeah. They're tough as hell. Yeah. But they're crazy. And yeah. even when you get, like, you see people get bucked off or whatever, they're still not in safety at that point because mm, they're, no. like... Yeah. going around they could just step on you or yeah. it's always been something that I'm <laughs> we used to go to rodeo every 4th of July in Colorado the Greeley Independent Stampede huge awesome rodeo and you know the dudes on the bulls it's crazy cool to watch yeah but somebody's getting hurt yeah. every time yeah period end of story yeah bulls? yeah yeah I know you've done seriously? it seriously like a live one yeah <laughs> my goodness you mean that, that a mechanical one 
No, it was a real one. In, How long did you stay on it? First time, not long. I've never, like, literally, I'm like, all right, here we go. As soon as that thing turned out of the chute, down. <laughs> I've never gotten up so fast off of my ass. That's what I was saying. Like, like, even once you get yeah. knocked out. You talk about adrenaline. Right? You had a buddy that there's a local, like, uh, like horse sale place. Mm-hmm. And on Fridays, you could pay, I think it was like yeah. 20 bucks, and you yeah. could go ride. Just yeah. anyone? Yep. Yeah. And my buddy had like the <laughs> chest protector and uh, chaps and all that type of stuff and a glove and I didn't have I didn't wear a face mask I wore a cowboy hat. It was a uh, that's man, back in the day, man. I it was fun. Yeah, like, I I think I'd still do it as long as Hillary never found out because it was like <laughs> right. you talk about an adrenaline rush for like, sure. I'm, I'm an adrenaline junkie. Like that's just I, I'm an idiot. An idiot. I think that's why I still compete. Is like I get that adrenaline rush and I need yeah. that. Uh, but yeah, I used to do a lot of stupid stuff when I was a kid. We built a street luge. Um, yeah, I went down the mountain. That's down the mountain. That's a great story. Skateboard trucks. Yeah. It's frightening. Uh, roller, roller skate wheels like in the a back. Cop made you yeah, stop I got or trouble. Something. Yeah. <laughs> it was like a two by two by eight, two by ten, maybe, or it may have been two two by sixes side by side, and then it had handles, and then like a ramp on the back for your head, and then your feet had this these like two by four that you could weave, and it would. I mean, you could go down yeah. and weave the corners and I think I got up to like 50, 55 or something like that. It just makes me think of when that one so time stupid. we had to ride a bike down and I was like almost at tears because it's like so steep. I'm like, ah! for yeah. sure on the well, brakes the whole I, time. Honestly, so we do that all the time is ride the bike and I've made it down without touching the brakes, which is stupid. That is insane. Yeah. Um, but fast. honestly, I'd rather be laying on that board with my head you're back closer here, to the ground. and you're closer to the ground with then with my face like this on a bike. Yeah, yeah. Know, just true. I guess yeah. be way better because I mean on that you'd get some road rash, but I never I never actually fell off of it because you just put your feet down when you want to slow down oh, okay. and you can gradually slow down. That it, might be it better. It was it was fun. Yeah, because you're like you can't. I remember going down and being like, I want to stop, but you can't stop because you're going so fast. Like you yeah. can't get you're off like the bike. Fifty five or sixty. <laughs> yeah. On the bike when I was would not touching my <laughs> so brakes. Fast. So fast. It's scary. the last corner it gets you because you're like, uh-huh. and I would just I would pull the brake, but I wouldn't hit the tension just right. like enough because then it makes me feel like I'm slowing down, right. but I wasn't. So it was <laughs> That's fun. so much. Fun. It's so stupid, but. We, we bought these three road bikes when I was like 17 or 18. I don't know why my brothers and I thought this is the thing we needed to do. But we had our dad load them up in the van, go from Loveland, Colorado, up to Estes Park, which is up a canyon, about 45-minute drive, drop us off in so Estes Park, down. and then ride them down. We weren't tough enough to ride them up like all the rest of the cyclists. Right. But, I mean, you're <laughs> flying past traffic. Oh, just, yeah. Whoo, no gear. We That was way before. No helmet? No helmets. Ooh. No, none of that. Ooh. Just... You're yeah. in your like yeah. surf shorts and yeah. flying down the mountain. I used to Good just times. bike to class all the time because it was so much easier to park, and I never wore a helmet, which is stupid. But yeah, I mean that th- that was like back before helmets were like a thing. A yeah. thing like you should be doing that back they in those days. Or helmets like, yeah, anyway, whatever. right? Right. Yeah. That or um, <laughs> hemp made of stone. Hemp, <laughs> hemp helmets. <laughs> uh, I do. I do have a leather helmet. What? Do I do have a football helmet. It's a leather, but it was my grandfather's. Oh, that's cool. nice. Yeah, that's cool. it's really cool, actually. I got my phone back. We can answer some more of those questions, I guess, oh. if we want to. Oh, cool. That'd be good. I screenshotted some from the other day. Um, what's your favorite post-exercise snack? Post-exercise snack. I think we answered that. I think we answered that okay. one, yeah. yeah. Do you have one? You weren't yeah, here. You weren't here. Um, I guess just like a protein bar, a protein shake, something yeah. like that. Yeah. I'm telling you that, that banana almond milk is awesome. We talked about Let's that test. It. The, was it Viome? Oh yeah, Viome. Viome. Yeah. So yeah. you, did you start that whole thing? No, Were Rich you the first did. one? Oh, Rich did. Cause yeah. you, but you've she adjusted. got it before I did though. She's yeah. got hers done. I just finally sent mine off cause I was too chicken to. Was there anything that poop. you were eating a ton of that <laughs> yeah, you were no. like, whoa, everything. I can't have that? Yeah, pretty much everything in my diet was Do you like, feel better? Feel I different? feel so much better. Really? It's like life changing. Yeah, I think for anyone who struggles with like kind of consistent stomach, yeah. you know, upsetness, it's totally <laughs> changed. Everything. Like what? What were you eating a ton of? Um, like, you- it, honestly, it was a lot of like broccoli or like, excuse me, vegetables. So like broccoli, tomatoes, cauliflower, um, corn. Wow. Bell like peppers, stuff. like things that I would just eat regularly, like in my lunch or dinner. Right. Um, and just crop those out. There's a lot of other things that I was eating too that are kind of minimized. So mm. it was easy changes. Like I was eating tuna and it was maybe don't eat tuna, try salmon or stuff like that. So 
Just so it like gives you stuff don't eat and then things that you should only eat a small portion of. Yep. And then it gives you things to like that are like your superfoods. Like coconut is one of my superfoods. Oh, wow. um, so I've switched like coconut milk and things like that. So it's a really else? cool test. What other, What is your superfood? Um, coconut, sunflower seeds. Really? Yeah. Um, I think salmon was one of them. Interesting. Yeah. And what are those things? Those like, uh, are they capers? Those like little... The salty things? The yeah. Green, like green those things? are like one of my superfoods. Really? Yeah. Oh, perfect. <laughs> so yeah, it was. it's a cool test. I definitely recommend it. That's awesome. You just have to scoop your poop. Yeah, you have to like poop onto a paper and scoop it, which is really <laughs> disgusting. That's yeah. why I waited so long to do it. It smells so bad. <laughs> oh, man. It's more like the idea of using like this mini spoon to scoop your own and poop. And it's like, don't, it says, it says get a, a scoop, but it says don't get a heaping scoop because yeah. too uh. much poop could throw off the test. And you're just like, I don't want to put that much thought into me getting poop off. Right. It. Like, And it's the tiniest little spoon. So you're like. Is this enough poop? Yeah. Like, and then it says shake vigorously. I'm like, how vigorously? I'm like, oh. like for 30 vigorous. seconds and then rest for 30 seconds and then 30 seconds. And so you're like, I want to wipe, but I can't. Like, it's just like, do I do this too fast? Like, it's so weird. You just it's have like, your poop sitting on a paper. Yeah, oh. it smells so bad. I don't, I don't want to use the word heaping scoop of poop altogether. Yeah. Heaping, right? just that's well, the good news it. is you don't have to have a heaping scoop. Yeah, right? they don't want a heaping scoop, but. Which is so weird. But I can't like. Where it's probably TMI, but if you had a hard poop, like how are you going to get a scoop? You know, yeah. like mine was not hard. Oh, so was, man. Yeah. I'm definitely going to do that test though. You should. That would be really Viome. good. Viome, which Viome. they don't pay us anything. No, so. they don't pay us anything. If you want yeah. to, then let us know. But yeah. but it's important <laughs> to know like more about yeah. your gut anyways. Like things That's the that you'd never think. That's the thing right now, right, is gut yeah. health. <laughs> yeah. Or, like fecal transplants and stuff like that, which yeah. is super weird. Oh. I know a lot of people that struggle with that though. Yeah. Like just having, just always being unsettled in some way yeah. and- I mean, there's so much stuff out there that we eat that's processed and all that. Sure. And even just the good stuff. It's crazy. It that, was crazy to me. Yeah. The healthy, healthy stuff, stuff. Yeah. like yeah. cauliflower, are, broccoli. Could not be yeah. But it's just like thing. everyone's different, right? Like, so like, hers probably be different. Rich's will be different. Yours yeah. will be different. But you just know what's best for you. And I think that's what's cool is like getting kind of like an inside look of like, oh, okay, what's good for my gut, you know, yeah. is specific to me. I sent you that picture of my, the eggs mm -hmm. this morning. And yeah. I, I had quit eating eggs and eggs sit really well with me, mm -hmm. you know, and I've kind of gone back to things that I knew in the past were that my body did good with, you know, instead yeah. of just kind of trying to be out there and try all different kinds of things. Yeah. The best part is coffee. I like had done an elimination diet thinking it was coffee and taking it out and it's not. So back you got it car. back. I got it. Yes. Ew, Starbucks gross. <laughs> We it's don't go good. there much, but I go there for that nitro. Nitro is good. Yeah. That's all they got that I like Man. is their nitro. It's really good. And I, I don't know what the deal that. is. Ever since the isolation shutdown thing. All the coffee shops are down. Well, the, the ladies in the line at the local Starbucks have been really nice. Oh, really? Because I'm just saying the people at that Starbucks in Cookville, Tennessee are not friendly. Really? Hmm. I feel bad for people that work at Starbucks. Like, it seems like they have, like, can you imagine all the people that, like, have these crazy coffee orders and you get one tiny thing wrong and then, like, they're screaming at you and all this stuff, like... And Did they you always the, seem like they're running around like crazy, like trying to get 500 cups of coffee done in like five minutes. The bar stool one where the guy ordered water with, yeah. it's, it's with <laughs> ice, extra ice, no foam. Yeah. By, ah, like it's so good. I don't know. And it's another language too, which is crazy. Yeah. You know, ordering yeah. it. I can't even read it right half the time. It's so long. Yeah. So I just black coffee. Yes. Yeah. I swear. Keep it easy. Yeah. That's good. I've been, you know what? I've. I like a lot of what Brost has here in town now. Some of their bagged yeah, coffee. They've got I some good. Really tried much. I've been than... trying stuff from everywhere. I've Soul got Craft. Oh. an arrow. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Soul oh, Craft. I was just going to say Soulcraft has, um, they'll deliver like a thing of uh, cold brew. I think it's nitro cold brew. And oh. it's, I think it's really, really? good. Mm -hmm. yeah. They'll deliver it. Like, yeah, now during, I don't know if it's oh, a thing that's yeah. going, but like during this like time. I was going to say, I don't need to know that. Yeah. Yeah, right? <laughs> I have an arrow press recipe that is the best coffee you've ever had. Really? And right. I ordered two arrow presses, and we're going to do it this week. And it, I'm telling you, it's the best coffee you've right. ever had. I, I'm in. I mean, you got to yep. have a good coffee bean. Like, I've done it with the, the Reagan uh, Good Dudes coffee. What is your I'm, favorite one now? We have the, all the Good Dudes Reagan, stuff. What's the Reagan? Right now is my favorite. Is uh, that a dark or light? Super light. light. Um, I really like light roast just because I feel like it has more flavor. It's got a little bit more, as goofy as it sounds, more notes and more, like, just more complex. No, that's not goofy. That's... 
Coffee like, talk. I know, I know, yeah. but that feels so lame doing it. <laughs> oh, like, that's I, what they call it. I know, but I'm like a, a coffee snob now. I'm like, ooh, I can't drink that. That's t-. like Starbucks <laughs> tastes terrible to me. Like it tastes like burnt coffee. I do yeah. like the nitro brew. Well, this brew. Is like espresso. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we actually we're getting the the Buffalo Brew espresso espresso machine in today, so maybe we'll oh, be able to cool. pull some shots off that. Let's get ready. Let's get ready. To, get ready to I've never it. actually. Sign me just, up. I've never <laughs> actually really rolling. had espresso, so. What uh, what's the stuff in the can? The good dude stuff it's, in the can. That so was delicious. The idea so is good. so that's uh, snap chilled is the I think the correct term. So it's hot coffee, fresh coffee, brewed hot, and then immediately chilled, and so uh, put into those cans. So it's not cold brew. So everybody thinks it's cold right. brew. It's not cold brew. Cold brew, you actually let it sit and steep overnight, and it's just a different, um, completely different brew. So. I may have talked about this on a couple of different podcasts, but just you can, man, you can geek out on all this stuff. So like with the AeroPress, what's cool about the AeroPress is you can, you don't brew it as hot. Okay. And so you don't, and it doesn't brew as long. And so some, the Stanford professor developed this thing. And so the idea behind it is, so like what happens is if you brew something too hot, I forget how it all works. Basically, you want to keep it from getting bitter and you want to keep it from being sour. If you brew it too long or too hot, I think is it gets bitter. Okay. If you don't brew it long enough or brew it too lean, it's sour. And so with the the uh, AeroPress, it's similar to an espresso kind of shot, and then you water it down. I do the one that I I use, and so basically it uses a lot of coffee, but it's really good. You do 35 grams. Um, hey, don't do that. 35 grams of coffee into the uh, AeroPress at like a um, pretty fine. Uh, ground, and then you drop 150 grams of water at 180 degrees. Like I said, this gets super mm-hmm. geeked out. And you really slow stir it for about a minute, minute 15. Then you flip it over. You put the, the filter on first. You flip it over, wet your filter, um, and then you push it through the AeroPress at a, like about 45 seconds to a minute slow. And then you add 120 grams of water on top of that after. And it's, I'm telling you, it's the best. Best coffee, China right, and Freddie. Yeah. Let's go, Jim. It's on there. No, I got <laughs> it's recorded. Down. I sent it to uh, Freddie because Freddie got real geeked out in coffee when we were in Miami, and he's been doing some stuff because yeah. he's not drinking anymore. And so he's like, "I'm, I'm all in." Yeah. And uh, China texts me the other day. She said, "Hey, since we're stuck inside, we we tried all three different. <laughs> we tried three different recipes for AeroPress." And he's like, "She was like, that was by far the best one. I think." Bridges sent it to me, but oh, it's nice. amazing. It's How a, do you get the water to that temperature, like specific? Electric kettle. Oh, okay. Electric kettle okay. is a game changer because that's the deal is Smart. like I used to have a kettle yeah. that has the little temperature degree or um, degree, whatever, um, temperature gauge on it. And it was, I had to put it on my stove and heat it and it takes forever. What's cool about this, um, I, I don't even know the brand. I'll, I can post the brand, but you walk up, you hit on you pour your water in you put on and then you set the temperature and you oh, walk away cool. nice. and it yeah. just heats and stays there to yeah. hold at that temperature that's awesome. oh. and so like that makes it easy it used yeah. to take forever because i would sit there and then i'd wait but now yeah. i just hit it and go and i'll like go to get the kids breakfast or whatever and then i come back and it's ready so like at with the aeropress i brew at 180 degrees and then so like i've been doing some pour over too just so i don't get because like i said it uses a lot of beans to do the aeropress but i'm telling you it's amazing um and then on pour over, I do about 200 degrees. Mm. And so I actually, have, I need to try it. Um, I, I cut. So I used to, with the pour over, after like reading some of that stuff, like the shorter, the better. So what I would do is pour in probably about 50 grams of water and you let it bloom. As they say, it kind of like gets all this stuff. And right. I don't know, whatever. And I would every 30 seconds add 50 grams of water, but I've been doing every 20 seconds adding 50 grams of water. It makes a really good cup of coffee too. So I can't believe that people figured this out. Like down I know, to, yeah. it's like a science. It's science. Yeah. Like yeah. it's, it's kind of crazy. And then, so now I use uh, for the longest time I was using like a just normal tap water. It didn't have a great filter on it or anything like that. Now I'm using a Brita, like because <laughs> oh, wow. the, so the water, yeah. the water, like, the water, chemistry it affects the it. The water though, changes yeah, the yeah. flavor, and then you can. Uh, what was wow. the other thing? Even, even with our crappy setup, like. 
you can tell when like sometimes the, the water just goes just back and forth yeah, for different. some reason. Yeah. yeah, and like you'll brew some coffee and you're like, oh, that's we'll gotta have go. to rebrew it. That's, yeah. gotta, that's yeah. got a wing to it. Yeah. We won't tell you our whole like top secret way to brew coffee. Yeah. It's pretty complicated. <laughs> it's uh, it's push it's the pretty... button on the Keurig. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's we fun though. Brew it. It's different. Like I said, I do the intermittent fasting, so it mm. gives me something to do in the morning, and you kind that of cool. geek that's out cool. on it and mess around with it. I tried to get Kristen to do different stuff. And, you know, I have the whole little setup now where I can do pour overs and everything. And she just wants to go to her Keurig with her Starbucks, her Starbucks. What does she, what does she get? Sumatra. Ooh. And a little bit of creamer and boom, she's happy. It works for you. It works for you. Yeah. See, I just, if you're adding stuff to it, it's probably, you can have a crappy cup of coffee. Yeah. But if you're going to only drink black coffee. Yeah. You got to have something. I mean, it makes a, I've had, you know. We we have our own with good dudes and there's the I like really like the Reagan that we came out with I really like the Roosevelt as well, Washington is good Lincoln's good Samson's too dark for me it's like it tastes burnt, um, but my favorite right now is that Reagan but then I'll try some other ones just so I can have some there's one called uh, crap I can't even remember what it's called it's in Nashville and they make a really good bean um, Mahalo, Trevor Bain, he's got some stuff and just to try different things yeah. to see what I like. But man, if you, cause there for a while, I would just order stuff off Amazon. You have to like go to somebody that's roasting it pretty, pretty quick. Like yeah. if you get something that's been roasted longer than a month or two, it's gross. It's like stale. And then you can't pre ground coffee's crap. Like right. you need to grind it pretty quick. So you, you're right. You are a snob now. I'm a snob. Are, definitely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Josh. Yeah, it's all British. Is that fault. what changed this because of good dudes? Because you didn't do I coffee before. I didn't drink before. coffee, no. And yeah, so I felt like since we <laughs> were selling coffee, I right. needed to actually kind of you know, know what you're talking about. Yeah, so that's awesome. I like it. Is that going good? Yeah, it's going real good. Yeah. Those cans will be pretty cool. That was kind of a. Are they out for sale yet? No, they're not, not. yet. No, we were going to actually have them at West Coast Classic, but we know what happened there. And so. Um, I really like that. Yeah. Out of all they're the really things. Good. They're easy. And so like on days that we swim in the mornings, that's what I really like is you just grab one and go. You don't have to wake up 15, 20 minutes earlier. You just grab one and they're nice. For me, like I don't like, I just, I'm being honest. I just don't like doing all the stuff. Yeah. I just want to drink it. Yeah. yeah. And like that can like that, that yeah. was awesome. It's easy. Hmm. It's easy. Just crack yeah. it open. Yeah. Have something. Yeah. That cold, that's the same company that does that cold wave pitcher that I posted about. Yeah. I got one and of those. So they reached out and were like, Hey. We've got these cans too, and they sent me some. Those are really good too, and so now they're doing our good dude stuff as well. So. Oh, right on! Pretty cool company. I love it. Good stuff. Uh, next question. Let's see here. I lost my spot. Uh, one of the Froning twos dropping. It's supposed to be July twenty first. I don't know. I don't know if that's gonna happen now. Who knows? CrossFit Games gonna happen? Any got any inside scoop for the? No inside scoop there. I mean, uh, IOC, so International Olympic Committee announced that they're gonna they've got basically a a deadline by mid-april if it this stuff's still going on then they're gonna have to push it or do something different so right um thoughts on jim's shutting down and the perfect steak uh, mm. <laughs> um thoughts on jim shutting down i mean you gotta do what you gotta do it's gotta be smart you know we decided uh last week on thursday that we were gonna shut down um, just to be smart, you know, the, the federal government's asking us to do all that stuff. And, you know, everybody wants to blame the federal, like federal government for not shutting stuff down. And there's a whole argument there that the federal government's not supposed to make that call. You know, it's supposed right. to be state by state. And that's right. one of the reasons the civil war started. So right. I feel like if it's, it's up to your state and that's the federal government is trying to do as much as they can to aid the states. Um, you know, obviously people want to argue that that more can be done, which there always is more that can be done, but it's not a perfect world. And so uh, we were, we decided to shut down because that's kind of what leadership has been asking and, you know, recommending. And then there was a state mandate yesterday that right. all gyms shut down. So right. we were ahead of that. And so we allowed members that were paying members to take home a plate and a dumbbell. And we're trying to do some Zoom classes and some virtual classes. We're trying to do some YouTube live for some of you guys out there and give you guys some break from you quarantine and get some fitness in and they've been really miserable workouts actually. <laughs> They're all pretty hard. <laughs> a lot of people though. Yeah. Yeah. A lot getting of people involved. Doing it. So I'm, I'm happy. It's been fun. Um, so we'll try to get uh, best steak. And I really like a ribeye. Uh, Chuck eye we decided is actually a really good cut too. It's a lot cheaper. I don't know if I've had that. It's okay. so ribeye is basically a rib cut 
and it's more I forgot what number of rib, and then a chuck eye is more towards the back, and it's mm. way cheaper, but it's I think it's almost better, just as good. Um, I mean, a fillet is also right. really freaking good. So char makes a great ribeye. Mm. Yeah, go they there do a good ribeye once a week. Mushroom or onion on yeah. there too. Ooh, they do a good job with that. Yeah. I might get up now and go. Oh wait, it's not open. <laughs> Any updates on the tattoo? Uh, I need everyone to go on Hillary's Instagram <laughs> and direct message her, telling her I need this tattoo. I need your help. Do something for me. Do something. <laughs> we gave you guys M30. Do this for me. <laughs> Just bombard her. Tag her. Whatever. Whatever you have to do. Because she's not gonna watch this, so she's not gonna know where it came from. <laughs> Do it. What is her what is she her resistance? She just does to this? not want me to get this sleeve. It was cool, man. It's, it's awesome. It's it like good. it's the whole story, the gospel, which is really and I I was talking to um, our pastor and I sent it to him and I was like, "What do you think of this?" He's like, "Dude, that's awesome." Yeah. And uh I said, you know, I kind of told him the whole thing. He's like, "Yep." I said, "But Hillary doesn't want me to get it." And he goes, Tell Hillary not to get in the way of the gospel. He goes, but don't, he goes, but don't tell her I said it. He goes, I'm that's awesome. Her. So I was like, that's good. Get that's behind good. me, that's Satan. That's, good. that's right. So I'm that's trying. Funny. It's it's not. We're not actually any closer whatsoever. I finally found an artist to do the one I wanted. And then we've gone back and forth for months now trying to get scheduled because he's so busy. Yeah. The, that's how you know he's a good tattoo artist. Right. So that's what you want. So <laughs> And then all this stuff kind of shut down. Yeah, so. that's definitely probably shut down. I feel like it's... In fact, I kind of have to. It's something I've always wanted, so I'm yeah. just going to do it. Do it. You should. Yeah. Well, and then the, the maybe dragon Maybe by the time be... I'm your age, I, I'll get mine. Yeah. I'm going to be like, Hillary, <laughs> screw it. What are you going to do? Divorce me? Right. That's a good <laughs> way to think would. about it. Yeah. She'll be like, yep, she's out. Yep. 50% a lot. 50% of what? Well, that's how much you'd lose if you oh, oh, yeah. divorced. Oh, yeah. That's a like, lot. <laughs> uh, about to sequester in a hotel for two weeks for my job. Tips on how to stay sane. What? Oh, man. Exercise. Exercise as much as you can when you can. Yeah. Um, you know, if they have a downstairs fitness center, we got a lot of workouts out there for you. Usually, you know, we're posting you got M30 and then you'll have an extra three that we're doing every week uh, on top of the M30. So. That's like, it's kind of crazy because that's really one of the things, one of the only things you can do yeah. if you're home, yeah. you know? Try to stay sane, man. And then don't, don't, don't like snack too much because yeah. right. you're going to be bored. So be careful what you Try do. Try to get off you know? your phone as much yeah. as you right. can. That's what happens to me. Like I start wandering around and then all of a sudden I'm trying to find, oh, well, those crackers right there, those those would be good in peanut butter. Maybe I'll dump yeah. some honey on that. <laughs> and then they're just like snacking the whole board day eating. even though you're not yeah. hungry. I'm the yeah. worst bored eater ever. I'm like, oh, I could eat. So yeah. If I say busy, I don't eat. But if I get bored, I'm done. Um, Let's see here. Investing tips. We have a whole podcast on this. Um, right now, you probably don't want to invest much. <laughs> you probably want to yeah. hang on to some of that cash. Yeah. Or you could get in on um, the coronavirus update a couple of weeks ago and sell off one point whatever billion oh, yeah. stocks like some of those um, senators, senators did. did. Real Sons classy move. Bitches. Wait, what happened? <laughs> they, there's 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 a, there was some insider trading going on. Like they, uh, these, a couple senators and some intelligence people um, got in on a coronavirus like briefing. Briefing. Yeah. And then the next basically got out of that meeting and sold off like a couple billion dollars worth yeah. of stock and then the stock market tanked and like the rest of us are kind of sitting here like yeah. the one guy I wish I could say his name because I'd call him out yeah Burr um, is yeah. Burr one of them yep yeah 3.1 million dollars he sold off and then according to what the press was saying yeah and I uh, like but he, he he was saying hey we're fine it's all okay talking yep. about for the rest of us we're good yeah but then he didn't lose a bunch of money crazy I've had it. I'm starting to get like, for the first time in my life, I'm starting to kind of get pissed yeah. about some of the politics. It's frustrating. Stuff. I mean, if so, like for, for me, the first time, I'm for like, me, you know, you know, I'm we're young investing. Yeah, I've invested since I was first won the game, so 24. So I've got some money in 401ks, mm -hmm. self-employed pensions, all that stuff. A lot of money in stock market. It's gonna be okay. I personally, I think. You know, right. there's people gonna argue with me and be angry that right. I said that, but. If you look at historical averages, yeah, in you know when I'm 55 and a half or whatever, I've got another 20 years for this money to ride. Like yeah. I'm not pulling anything right now. Right. If, if anything, I'm buying right now more because it's so yeah. so cheap and it's gonna rebound. Yeah. Uh, but man, it it's it does suck for people that are like getting close to you know 
mm-hmm. retiring, and you just lost a bunch. A bunch. So I mean, we're basically right now we're we're about back at where when Trump took office. Right. So you know we're still we're we had a buffer built, but now it's yeah. you're kind of like all right, let's uh. Uh, right now, I think like a, maybe a good rule of thumb is if if you've got some money to throw away, yeah, then go invest. ahead, yeah, invest some. Yeah. This is now now yeah. time to invest. Get in there, if and it, then if, if you don't, if you've got money in there, leave it because right. you're not, you know. My brother called me the other day, and he's getting close to retirement. He's been a firefighter for 26 years or so, and a lot of those guys have done pretty good. Mm-hmm. You know, they spend sit around talking about investing. You know, when yeah. they're not working, yeah. And there's a bunch of those guys that have done pretty good, and he was just like, man. There it all goes. Like, yeah, they were a ton of frustration as yeah. it relates to that. Yeah. But but at least they're ahead. Yeah. They're ahead of the yeah, game. Yeah, Nobody's yeah, going yeah. under. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, if you if you want to look at, you know, what happened last week, you could get super depressed if that's, you know, what your worth is, is in. And yeah. I kind of look at it as, you know, I don't see that money anyway. So, yeah. you know, it sucks. If it doesn't come back, it doesn't come back and it, it will suck. But. You know, I didn't, it's, it, I, you don't put your, that's why we, you know, we talk and we all wore pray shirts last week. That's why we yeah. don't put our worth in that type of stuff yeah. because that stuff can be gone in an instant and, you know, I don't get too, too faithy, yeah. but I mean, you put your, put your yep. life in worldly things and it's gone and that can directly yep. affect your mood. I mean, there were some days last week where I'm frustrated, but not about stock market, stock market, but you know, like figuring out, Hey, we're closing the gym down. You know, yeah. what about, you know, we're going to lose some members or they're going to suspend memberships. They'll probably come back. But if they don't come back, you've yeah. got our online programming, which is a big part. Like, I've got three kids. To, I've got, you know, all you guys and people that work here that we're trying to, you know, mm-hmm. uphold. And it's it's yeah. a lot on you. And then you're like, all right, let's, let's relax a little bit, you know, like, because that's exactly what I feel like is going on is. And, you know, we always say media, 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 but they have so much influence on, you know, because this thing was going around. Oh, I forgot last week, and it was like kind of crazy that the government has can shut down sports, shut down this, shut down that, shut down that, all in an instant. And I was like, it wasn't the government; right. it was the media. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so you look at and you replace government by look what the media did last week or yeah. last couple. And we do need to be smart. We do need to be careful, like all this stuff. Yeah. But man, you read some of these headlines, and you're like, if you just read the headlines versus actually getting into like and breaking down some of the numbers and being smart about, all right. Like, let's actually dive into what they're saying here. Like, instead of just the headlines. Yeah. Yes, it's so going to be, a, it's, it might be a yeah. long road and we're going to, but it, we're going to be okay. I, I did uh, the Monday Mayhem Mindset post. Yeah. And I used Into the Storm. Yeah. I was just kind of thinking about that. And yeah. I was, I was actually, I was talking to Matt the other day and mm-hmm. I wanted to get another hat or whatever. And I was on the website and I was looking at some of the things that have been written and the mottos and stuff and, um, it's crazy because now more than ever, we need to be making values-based decisions. Yep. yep. You got to know what that is. Yep. And if you're if you're making choices based on momentum or pattern or emotions or systems yeah. or emotions, for the first time in probably our life, everything's different. Yeah. And if you don't really understand a little bit more about your identity, and for and, sure, I mean, the first time in my grown-up life, I mean, you know, oh eight didn't really hit me super hard because I was still in college. I was yep. a firefighter. So it was, it was sucked. Like my dad, uh, their plant ended up moving to Mexico, but another plant or, um, another business came right in. So, I mean, there were some times of uncertainty, but this is the first time in my adult life and, you know, having to make decisions based on that stuff. It's the first time I've had to do that. And yeah. So it's, uh, what you're saying about the finances is a perfect example though. If, if, if you don't have something to turn in and go, Hey, yeah. This is who this is who I am and this is what I believe and so that is going to be what it's going to be and we're not going to freak out about no, it. We're no. going to be all right. And for us that's a, you know, it's our faith is a and our family and some of those things are yeah. the anchors in our lives, but I'm dealing with all the time now people there are people fighting in CVS over toilet paper. Toilet the other paper. Day. Yeah. Toilet yeah. paper. It's this crazy. lady grabs three packages off the shelf and there's a little old lady standing there right here on 10th Avenue, mm-hmm. Cookville, Tennessee. Little old lady says I'd could I have one of those, please? The other lady who's in her 40s says no. So I started walking to take one of those, and some guy stepped in. He came around the corner before I could and grabbed it. He took it to and her. And gave it to the old lady. But I'm awesome. like, what are you doing? Yeah. What, what are we doing here? Yeah. The, you know? That me or the, the video, the guy, the daughter and the dad are talking, and he's doing the math on how much toilet paper like somebody took at CVS mm-hmm. or at uh, 
was it Sam's? Did you guys see that? No, I don't think oh, so. Oh man, and he's like, that's got to be a lot of it's at so Sam's. So he's like, so if somebody, so like we saw somebody yesterday, and I'm fudging the numbers, but somebody buy, you know, four massive. You're at Costco or Sam's right. mm-hmm. buying whatever. Right. He's like, that's however many sheets per roll. That's however many. <laughs> like he's doing the math in right. his head. And he's like, that's 182 shits a day for the next however many yeah. years. Right. And you still have enough toilet paper. He's like, what are you doing? Like, yeah. it's just insane. It so. is. I mean, I can see if you've got like, so like my mom yesterday, she's like, hey, I was at the store. They had toilet paper. Yeah. So I grabbed your sister some. I grabbed you. Not like right. not an obnoxious sure. amount. But, you know, like a 12-pack, a 12-pack, and my mom bought a 12-pack. And But people right. are like, what are you doing with all that toilet paper? And she's like, I'm like, calm down. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We're giving so. it to family. Yeah. Yeah. So. I don't know. There's a, we were walking our dogs around the, around the street and around the block the other day. And there's this little old lady and she comes out only at night. Um, and I'd never met her before. And we'll be out at 10 o'clock at night. And she'll be out there doing her yard work at 10 o'clock at night. Hmm. Oh. And she wears like this kind of like like almost like a bathrobe that kind of covers her or whatever. And I've always thought it was kind of weird, and, you know, because she's just mm-hmm. out there late at night. So I said hi to her and she, her head pops up and she wants to talk desperately. And she tells us her story and she's got a husband who's dying inside. And this is just three houses mm-hmm. down from us. Yeah. And she's taking care of them and they don't have family and they don't have relatives. And about the only time she can get out and she's not taking care of him is when he goes to sleep. Oh, so wow. she comes out and tries to do her yard work and, her house is real neat and real nice and, and you know, oh my gosh. we were just, we were just remembering and that Kristen and I were like, it's time to pay attention to community now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We need to go around the block and knock on the door and make sure she's okay. What do you and, need? Yeah. Yeah. And that, that mindset of, I, I think it's okay to take, to pay attention to the people that you love and that mm-hmm. you're responsible for and make sure they have what they need yeah. and then we got to turn out yeah. and then we got to pay attention to the people in our community and. Yep, for sure. And pull yeah. together and make sure everybody's all right. And I saw something too, like you see all like different kinds of memes and stuff, but it's like a lot of people are doing stuff that we all should have been doing the whole time, yeah. like checking on the elderly yeah. that we live nearby and like all these these positive things that are happening. So, well, it's it, it's it's a really sad place. If like nine eleven, everybody pulled together mm-hmm. for sure. And if we don't do that now, it it's it's telling yeah. as to where we are. As, as a, a country, country and for sure, where our hearts and minds really are. That's the one thing I love about, honestly, about being in a little town in the south is that people people really do care about each other, and people are going to slow down. People will check on people. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. All right, it's episode eighty-five. Tasia, special guest. <laughs> Thanks. You guys Keyword aren't sick of me yet. Special. Ha. Huh. So special. RP strength. They still you need to keep that diet on track while you're in quarantine. Don't eat those cookies, or if you do, <laughs> track those cookies. You have that. You have an inside tracker, uh, which we all got our stuff. Did you get all your stuff back? I did. Tasia wasn't gonna do it, and my inner age is so young. That's so. Mine is going. I'm 67 inside. What is going on? Dying inside, and nobody <laughs> knows it but me. That's a song right it there. Is. Yeah. Holy crap. I'm what 22, I think. I'm 20. That's BS. Yeah, I really was outer. 67. I'm Good not kidding. Good thing they're not doing your outer age. <laughs> 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 Jokes. <laughs> All right. Uh, yep. That's it. And stay safe. And I'm not sure when this is coming out, but Monday, Wednesday, Friday, at least for the next two weeks, maybe longer, we're going to be doing quarantine bonus workouts. And Violet is... <laughs> What do they call it? A raspberry, I guess. <laughs> She's just fart noisy. <laughs> so, that's how Violet feels about this whole deal. She's just getting droplets all over me. So. <laughs> Thanks, Violet. Don't care about my social space, huh? All right, peace. <laughs>